Many of us cyclists are obsessed with numbers, which probably goes a long way to explain why so many of us have a major love affair with our cycling computers. Now these essential gadgets can measure all kinds of on the bike metrics and can range in price from a very modest £20 or $30 right up to a top of the range one costing several hundred and they can actually represent the single biggest investment that you will make to your cycling after you've actually bought your bike. So what are the key things that you need to know before buying one? Before you go out and spend all of your hard-earned cash on the latest and greatest all-singing, all-dancing cycling computer, I would suggest sitting down and asking yourself a couple of important questions, such as what are the on-the-bike metrics that you want to measure or record, why do you want to record them, and how much do you want to spend? To put it very simply, the more money you spend on a cycling computer, the more numbers it will display. And if some of those numbers are ones you can perhaps do without, you might as well do yourself a huge favour and spend a little less money on it. Now the type of cycling you do and what your aims are will heavily influence the numbers that you will need to see. So for instance, if you're a regular club cyclist who maybe does the odd sportive now and then, you may not need to see up to the minute power, watts and FTP numbers. Now, any discussion about cycling computers would be completely remiss without also talking about Strava. Unless you've been living with a pack of wild dogs for the past 15 years, you will know exactly what Strava is. But maybe you're new to cycling, in which case, Strava is a bit of a cross between social media and sports logging app, and the way you join in this fun is through your cycling computer. So not only will Strava record and display all of your ride data and a GPS track of where you've been, but you can also follow people and they can follow you. There are also things called segments, which are basically stretches of road, usually climbs, over which you're timed every time you ride them and are entered into a kind of league. Virtually everyone already has a cycling computer but they don't know it. I am of course talking about the humble mobile phone. If you download one of the many free cycling computer apps it will accurately and reliably record your basic metrics. However, there are disadvantages to using a mobile phone, not least of which is battery life. A typical iPhone, for example, probably won't last for more than a couple of hours, and the last thing you want is for it to run out of power if you need to make an emergency call. Also, if you want to use it to measure slightly more advanced metrics, such as heart rate and cadence, you will need to buy a couple of extra sensors. Now, I go into all the advantages and disadvantages of using your smartphone as a cycling computer in another film, and I'll leave the details to that one in the description below. Assuming that you do want to go down the separate cycling computer route and you don't need anything overly complicated, you can pick up a fairly modest one for under £30 or $50. Looking through the main cycling mail order websites, I managed to find a couple of likely candidates that would fit the bill, and typical of these is the Cati Velo 7. Like many of the cycling computers in this price point, it's a fairly basic model and will measure the basic essential metrics such as time, speed and distance. Many of them are wired. Some of them, if you're lucky, are wireless. They're fairly easy to mount. They have a rechargeable battery and they're easy and straightforward to use. You just get on the bike, press start, do your ride and press stop when you finish. There's no saving the ride, no uploading to Strava or sharing to social media. Basically what you see is what you get and there is nothing overly fancy to them. But if all you need to know is how fast you're cycling, while you're cycling, how far you've ridden and how long it's taken you to do that distance and literally nothing else, 
then this type of cycling computer is perfect for you. So moving up into the next price bracket, this is where you'll find most of the popular cycling computers such as Garmin and Wahoo. Typically, these will cost you around £200 or $300, and they do obviously come with extra functionality. In addition to the basics of time, speed and distance, you will also have things like heart rate and cadence, and they will even come bundled with the relevant AMP Plus sensors, which is basically the system that allows your cycling computer to talk to lots of different accessories. Using this system, they will also be able to talk to things like power cranks and even electronic gear shift systems such as Shimano Di2. And of course, many of them will also have GPS functionality, which not only allows you to record where you've been on your ride, but it will also allow you to have some kind of navigation feature. Many of them have been designed to be used with Strava and its premium features such as live segment alerts which tells you when you're approaching your favourite climbs so you can try and beat your PR or even the king of the mountains if you're feeling strong. Cycling computers within this price point also invariably come with Bluetooth connectivity which essentially means that it can talk to your phone. So in addition to being able to upload your ride wirelessly to Strava, it also means you can use your phone's messaging capabilities and receive text messages directly on your cycling computer's screen. It can also relay your position in real time to things like Garmin LiveTrack, as well as sending out a crash alert so that if the worst happens and you have an accident, it will automatically detect it and send out a text to a pre-specified contact so they can come and rescue you. Typical cycling computers within this price bracket include the Garmin Edge 130 or the Edge 520 or the Wahoo Element Bolt. The next price bracket up is over £200 or $300 and typically include computers such as the Garmin Edge 1030. Many of the computers at this price point will measure any and every metric you could possibly think of plus a few more. And to be honest, a lot of these numbers might not make all that much sense. So unless you are a serious racer or have far more money than sense, I would stick my neck out and say that I personally feel they're a bit of a waste of money. All in all, I think us cyclists really enjoy using our computers. I'll put my hands up now and say that I really enjoy using mine. For me, it's a great way of measuring my performance, setting my training targets and quantifying my improvements. They're very motivational and I enjoy analysing the numbers and my route almost as much as I enjoy the rides themselves. So if you found this film useful, please like and share. And if you'd like to get the most out of your cycling, please consider subscribing for my regular weekly uploads. Thanks for watching.